You know, it was uh, funny when I put up the video where <laughs> I got vaccinated. Uh, that right there was really illustrative of why people are where they are. I've had many people put in a link to a video or some type of proposed research that they've done. And it quickly dawned upon me that the average person person doesn't know how to do quantitative research and you know this isn't like i'm not i'm not calling folks stupid it's not that you're stupid there are people who are born geniuses but until they are going to school they cannot realize that genius so essentially i'm not saying you're stupid what i'm saying is you're untrained because essentially what you need to do is have 10 or more data points to pull your information from. And I, I had a lot of people send me literally uh, one website. And I'm just sitting there like, oh, this is this is sloppy, inaccurate research, man. This isn't really going to work onto it. If you were to try to, let me go ahead and put it to you like this. If you guys who were trying to defend your viewpoints and like, you know, if you want to take the vaccination, that's on you. If you don't want to take it, that's on you. Um, in fact, I actually did a poll of all my friends and 80% of the people that I, 80% of my friends have either taken the vaccination or they intend to take it. And 20% are like, I don't know about that, bro. I don't know about that. So this is really in line with what I was talking about in the video that the majority of the country is going to get vaccinated. And it's going to, you know, it was really crazy how wearing a mask or do not wear a mask became such a hot button topic. And at the core, this really explains why people are where they are. Now, I'm about to say something that's going to be controversial. The most educated people make the most money. Now, I know many people are like, I know someone who didn't go to school and he's a millionaire. And and once again, education is more than a college degree. I dropped out of college my junior year. And what keeps me making money is I keep learning how to do new things. So when I say the people who make the most money are the most educated, that's what I'm talking about. They don't just go to college. You know, there, there are many people that never pick up an, a book after they graduate school. They they stop the education process. They put a pause button on it. And this is one of the reasons that most people don't know how to do quantitative research. And I'm about to give you a quick primer on what you need to do to do the quantitative research. First of all, you need to find... 10 or more studies about that area, 10 or more. So with the vaccine, it's easy to find a lot of different studies. That's the first step, to find the studies. The second step is to vet who's done the study. Was the study funded by a major corporation? Was the study funded by public research? Where did this funding come for this research and what research methodology did they use in the research? Did they use uh, blind testing? You know, it, I mean, it, it gets into a lot to do quantitative real research. It gets into a lot. It's not simple. It's not easy. And this isn't something that you're going to be able to do really quickly. Um, one of the things that I'm looking at, like, let, let me go ahead and walk you through the reason that I'm going to start this buy here, pay here. I'm just, you know, looking at um, the number of people who were behind on their car notes, the number of people we have currently three million people or more, three million plus who are on record, who are in the forbearance uh, situation, who are not paying their mortgage. OK, now here is something that a lot of people will never, ever bring up. I think that number is twice what is being reported. And this is why there are many people who are not paying their mortgage 
but because they cannot foreclose on them, they're in a they're not in a formal forbearance category. But they're like, hey, they can't they can't kick me out. And there's a certain segment of the population that when there are certain things on the plate, they will take advantage in the most unsavory ways possible. So I'm going to say the number of people who are in forbearance, either formally or informally, is about eight million. And then when you go ahead and like, OK, you're not paying your mortgage. Are you paying your car payment? Are you paying your credit card bills? And once these numbers, because essentially these numbers are like, you know, there's 7 million people are not paying, you know, it is much higher than being reported because these um, studies don't include the people who are in the informal section of the, like the informal people, like the people who have not contacted their mortgage company and entered into a formal forbearance agreement there are many people who's like, hey, they can't foreclose on me. There's a ban on foreclosure. So I'm going to ride it out. I'm just ride it out. And you, you're going to have a segment of the population that is going to uh, play this game for a long time. And, you know, essentially, let's get back to how to do quantitative research. First of all, you need multiple studies. You cannot do it with one, two, or three. That's 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 very slim. That's not enough data. And also, when you're going to look at your data furnishers, how big is their pool? Because one of the big things is I heard that, you know, uh, the FDA did not approve the vaccine. Uh, actually, the FDA did approve the vaccine. They like say, hey, you know, it's good to go. So they did not do formal FDA approval, but they did give approval of the vaccine. And also, all these people who did this research, uh, you, you cannot do research in an echo chamber. Doing research in an echo chamber is like going to the beach and being surprised that you find sand. Uh, th there's, there's a lot of things. This goes back to looking at the data furniture. And is it a blog? Is it a, a reputable research facility? What is it? Where's this information coming from? I had people sending me stuff from crackpot blogs, conspiracy theories. And, you know, there have been many people who have thought that COVID was um, a joke. Let's just go ahead and call it what it is. There are many people who thought COVID was a joke. There are many people who thought that COVID didn't exist. And I may be bringing on a friend of who was an anti-vaxxer. He was an anti-vaxxer, didn't want to do anything until he caught COVID and spent four weeks in ICU. And this is kind of where we are with a lot of this. A lot of you are not going to believe this is real until you get sick and suffer harm. And that that's sad that you have to take it to that point because my friend, he was like, you know, he was doing all the precautions. He was doing everything so he wouldn't get it. And then he's living with people who are out here freestyling buck wild and fancy and free and they ain't get it. And he's being extremely careful and he got it. And th this is one of the things because uh, he was telling me when he was in the hospital and he was talking to his doctors you don't know how this thing's going to impact you until you get it. Some people will have mild flu-like symptoms, okay? And then some people, like one guy I was following, he never left the hospital. He went in the hospital with COVID. They had to amputate his leg, and he died in the hospital. He was an actor in uh, California. And you, you're seeing Herman Cain. Got it. Two weeks later, gone. So, you know, and I had a lot of people who were like, hey, man, I'm disappointed in you. Uh, I want to do a video like I'm black, but I don't act black. Uh, that's going to be a really interesting video because there are many of you who think because we share the same skin color, we share the same heritage, that we're going to act the same. And I'm going to be really detailed in doing that video. But essentially, if you want to do quantitative, hard, good research, it's going to take time. It's going to stress you a little bit. And it's going to, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. 
And this is something else too, that when you do quantitative deep analysis, you will find things that you don't like. Because uh, like, you know, I, I, I have like my pest, I'm not gonna mention his name, but whenever I make a move, it's based upon research. Like when I got rid of, like if I'm working on a YouTube channel and I don't see that it's gonna bear fruit, I kill it. And I got a lot of people, oh man, he's starting, he's starting and quitting, he's starting and quitting. And they don't understand what's going on on this side of the equation, nor should they, they really don't have to understand. I really don't care what they think. But one of the things that I find to be interesting is how many people are watching you to see what you do and they're not doing anything in their own lives to move their lives forward. They're not doing anything to um, increase the quality of their life. And, you know, this research, once again, like I said, I'm going to say it again. The most educated people make the most money. And if you will look at billionaires and multimillionaires, the majority of them have degrees. The majority. Not all of them, but the majority. And you look at the trend lines, you will see it over and over and over again. The most educated people have the best quality of life. They have the best outcomes and they have the best uh, lifestyles. Typically, not 100%, but typically following the trend lines. And, you know, this is a lot of the stuff that we're going to be talking about here on this channel as I go forward. Because we need to get into the real analysis. Like, I'm not going to be talking about Kevin Samuels and all this relationship stuff. Because um, that's that's something that gets a lot of people's attention when you go into the relationship realm. But I want this channel to be about business. <laughs> all right. That was fun. I want this channel to be about business. I want it to be about making money and I want it to be about quantitative analysis. And um, like, you know, recently Graham Stephan talked some junk about me on his video. I've not seen it yet. And I've had a lot of people leave comments that were ineffective communication. And yesterday, someone from Facebook actually sent me the videos and told me exactly in the way the video where he was talking junk. First one out of all of these comments, because a lot of people don't have really good uh, communication skills. And that's really going to be important. We're going to be talking about a lot, of bit, a lot of stuff. But, you know, if you want to um, be successful, you're going to have to learn how to do quantitative analysis. Real hardcore, real substantial analysis, because the book Upshift and when you look in the demographics, like... I, I mean, all of the signs, all of the studies I've done points to the fact that uh, one thing I'm going to do is create a car rental program where I'm going to like, you can rent a car for X amount of months. And then once you rent it, then we may, you know, take your rent payment and apply it as a down payment and sell you the car. There, there's a lot of things that we can get to do that I am looking at. And um, I got, I take my pre-licensing class Monday. <laughs> it's it's going to be until 10 p.m. So it's going to be a really long day. But I'm really looking forward to this because those of you in the art of holding and those of you in the um, corporate toolbox, you're going to get all of this data and all of this behind the scenes stuff. But quantitative analysis, I'm, I'm probably going to do another video about this because uh, essentially there's a lot of people out here who are talking about stuff with no real analysis, no real data behind it, none whatsoever. And that's really harmful to your efforts to become successful. It really is because you could be operating on false narratives and you can invest all of this time. Like give you an example. Uh, I'm looking for car loads, car lots. And I went to this one guy and he, he's been in the business since 1995. I think he's trying to retire. He owns a lot in Doraville and, you know, and I, I found several other lots in Doraville, right? And I was talking to him and the political climate in Doraville is not really conducive to business. 
And I was like, oh, he's like, I've seen people spend $100,000, $200,000 building another building and Doraville will not grant them a business license. And I was like, ah, that's why all these folks up here, because it's an inhospitable, you know, and th this, this is kind of the research you got to do. You got to get out. You got to talk to people. You got to find out. And I, everything can't be found online. I know a lot of stuff can be found online, but sometimes you actually have to go out and talk to people. I know, crazy, right? Well, for those of you who want to get into the corporate, the art of holding, the price isn't going up until May, and you can get into the Fast Start Business Boot Camp. You can get that. We're going, you know, going to do this for two months, and you know, right now we did the mindset stuff, and now we're doing the corporate stuff, and then we're going to get into the real building of business. And um, I figure it's going to take me two, three months to get the dealership up and running. Cause first thing I got to find is a lot. And then I got to apply for my license. And then I got to go to auction and buy some cars. Then I got to start advertising. So this, this is, we're, we're looking at a process here. It's going to take some time, but this is one of the things I'm going to do. So that's all I got for you guys. I will see you in the next one. Links below to everything.